Meat Boy is back, and with a lack of meat packing due to the quarantine, I'm going to show you guys how to can some meat today. And last week we did a cone fee method, which you know didn't require anything, and that's a very quick and easy way uh, to preserve meat and fat. Today we're going to do the old school canning method that does not require a pressure canner. All you're going to need is some jars, some meat, and a pot of boiling water, as well as some salt. So let's get started. As you guys can see, the water is at a rolling boil. Here I have two pint jars. Uh, you can use a larger quart jar, but you have to make sure that it can be completely submerged in the pot. So if you have a larger pot, you can use a larger jar. And the first thing we want to do is sanitize these. Uh, so we're going to boil these, and that's going to kill any bacteria, anything we don't want on the jars and on the lids. We can take these out. And I'm gonna run them under cold water just to speed this up a little bit. So the jars are clean and cooled off. Here I have about three pounds of grass-fed ground beef. I know if you're getting this from a local farm, that's great. If it's from the supermarket, uh, try to go organic as well. Uh, this is just some sea salt that I'm gonna add. A little extra preservative and of course brings out the flavor of the meat. I'm just gonna mix this up just to incorporate the salt. And this is where you can add any, you know, flavoring, spicing, seasoning that you'd like to. You know, you could add thyme. That's one of my favorite things. So I had a little bit of time today. I'm just going to take a little bit of time, you know, rub it in my fingers to release the oils. And thyme in general is, is probably my favorite herb to put on red meat. You know, if I could only choose one thing, this would definitely be it. And now we just put it in the jar. So you don't need to add water or anything or broth to the jar to top this off because... You know, when you cook it, the meat is going to release its own juices and almost like steam itself. But when I'm putting this in here, I'm just going to you know, try to pack it down. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm just going to try to get as much as possible in the jar. And I'm using ground beef today, but you know, you guys could use whatever cuts of meat you want. Uh, you know, if you're using chunks of meat or larger chunks, uh, you still don't have to add water. Now the water will release from the meat when you cook it. Uh, you just want to get it pretty tight. Yeah, I figure most of you guys have ground beef on hand and, and it's the cheapest and most affordable cut. So. so the meat's almost near the top. You know, it's not overflowing, but it's packed about as tight as we could get it. Now I just want to wipe the lid and make sure it's nice and clean before putting the top on. You know, wipe the lid itself. Wipe the band, make sure it's all clean. Before you screw the band on, just take the lid and press it down and make sure that you know no extra meat is coming out of the sides. And we should be good here. Yep, a little tight, but nothing crazy. And there we go. So let's do the other one too. I would say the only really important part here is that you try to get you know, the bottom packed pretty tight and then the rest of it is, is pretty easy to do. All right, so again, I'm gonna take my lid and press it down and make sure there's no extra meat. Looks good. Wipe the edges and then we'll screw it on. Probably make some meatballs for my sister with this later. And now all we have left to do is put these in the boiling water. Lid down. And since the water isn't covering the top, I'm just gonna top this off with some more water. So we're gonna keep this at a rolling boil for about 90 minutes, an hour and a half, and then we should be done. So about halfway through the process, we wanna flip these over and put them right side up. So it's been about 90 minutes. Our meat is cooked more than we would ever want it, but you know, the goal here isn't exactly, you know, the healthiest or the tastiest meat. The goal is to have a non-perishable preserved food. So let's take a quick look at these jars. Obviously incredibly hot, but you know, you could see the jars are full of the liquid that has seeped out of the meat. So as this cools off, what's going to happen is, you know, the meat is going to settle to the bottom and there's going to be like a little bit of a space on top. So, you know, don't be surprised if you see something like that. And these are probably good for, you know, I would assume at least a year or two, uh, maybe even longer. Now, you lovely ladies and gentlemen might be wondering, Frank, don't you need a pressure canner? Isn't this not safe? I mean, our grandparents, whether it was 50, 100 years ago, used to use this method to preserve food. And a lot of people still use this without a pressure canner. A lot of our modern food guidelines 
are because our food system is so polluted with chemicals, unnatural strains of bacteria that it becomes dangerous. But if you're using, you know, a high quality meat product, if you're sanitizing your jars, you know, there's no real difference between this and the pressure can stuff. And I would even argue that that's being heated at such a high temperature, you're probably going to lose even more of the nutrients. Maybe we'll give all of the stuff we've made a taste in a future video, but I mean, let's be honest guys, well done overcooked canned ground beef. I mean, it might still be moist because you know, all the moisture is in there. And you know, if you were to add like tomato sauce or you know, a lot of spices and seasonings, you know, this stuff might actually taste pretty good. Uh, but you know, by no means is it gonna be this like amazing end all be all dish unless you put you know, quite a bit of effort into seasoning it. So I hope this helps some of you guys out. This method and the confit method are definitely the two easiest ways to preserve meat that require a minimal amount of resources, a minimal amount of time, as well as work, and you know, you could use it with ground beef. Uh, I think next week we'll show you guys how to dry beef to make pemmican, and, and then we could also do jerky, but the problem with those two is that it's very time intensive, it's very labor intensive, and uh, you know, most of you guys aren't gonna want to do that type of stuff. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, of course, hit that bell icon, and above all guys, please share the channel. If you guys do wanna support me further, check out Frankie's Free Range Meat. You can get some of this ground beef. You can go to organsupplements.com if you guys want a non-perishable source of nutrition. You know, those organ supplements will last, you know, two, three years as they are freeze dried. Uh, you can go to Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products, and frank-stefano.com for a free carnivore diet meal plan. Uh, this isn't exactly on the meal plan, but I'm sure you guys could fit it in. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind is uh, the fat ratio of the ground beef you're using. Uh, ideally 70-30 because if it's 80-20, you might have to add more fat. So, you know, if you do want to take these out and actually eat them and use them in the future, you know, it's a bit better to have a complete source of nutrition in there. And I mean, even use an organ grind, that would be great. And that's another reason that I use the smaller jars, which I forgot to mention earlier. Yes, you can use like a big quart jar or like even a half gallon jar and put a bunch of meat in there. But you know, when you actually go to take this out to eat it, you know, even this amount of meat, this is a lot for one person. You know, you could do smaller jars and I would even encourage that. So take care guys. Mm -hmm.